Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Topics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about link time optimization. Now, when we give our entire program in a single translation unit or a single source file to our compiler, it can do some pretty amazing optimizations, especially between um, a function, uh, especially with function calls in between uh, different function calls in this thing called interprocedural optimization. Now, if we start separating functions into different translation units, so we start compiling things separately, these same optimizations may not be applied, at least not by default. Now, if we enable this thing called link time optimization, when we start to stitch together a program to create an executable from multiple different translation units or multiple different you know, pieces of object code, we can get some of these optimizations back. So what we're gonna be showing off in this video is the difference between a program compiled with uh, link time optimization enabled versus disabled versus one that we just have a single source file. Okay, and that source file is going to be, you know, basically benchmarking matrix multiplication. So here we've got our single translation unit benchmark. So here's our base mmul right here. It's just a triply nested for loop. And then down here for our Google benchmark code, we're just going to be allocating some memory, uh, calling our baseline matrix mul function, and then freeing our memory down here. And we're gonna test three different uh, square matrix sizes of two to the eight, two to the nine, and two to the 10. Okay, so what does our uh, multi-translation unit benchmark look like? Well, the code looks almost identical. The only difference is now that we have a, fun a function prototype instead of the actual source code. So here, the rest of the code, you can see it's just allocating the memory, calling the matrix mul function, and then freeing the memory for the same matrix sizes. And our uh, matrix mul function, this base mmul.cpp, you see it's exactly the same as the one where everything's in a single source file. It's just a triply nested for loop. Okay, so now let's compare these two without doing link time optimization. So we don't need it for a single translation unit one. So we'll go ahead and just do compile this with a bunch of you know normal optimizations. So we'll link against libbenchmark and libpthread. This is just required for Google Benchmark. Um, O3 optimizations and mArch and mtune equals native. And we'll call this single TU. And we'll do the same thing for our baseline one. So uh, same optimization flags that is. So O3 and mArch and mtune equals native. So we'll compile our object code first for base mmul. And then we'll go ahead and com uh, compile and link everything together for the multi-translation unit one. So here um, we'll pass in you know, our other source file, our object code, link against libbenchmark and libpthread. And again, the same optimization flags. O3, mArch equals native, mtune equals native. And we'll call it multi-tu. So let's actually run these and see what kind of performance numbers we get, what kind of execution time numbers. So first with single TU, we see 17.5, 205, and 1728 milliseconds for 2 to the 8, 2 to the 9, and 2 to the 10. And so now let's run this for our multi-TU benchmark. See what we get. So a little bit worse on each of them. And in fact, it looks like a whole lot worse in our multi-TU 10. So let's just kind of focus on that example real quick. We'll actually look at the assembly code here. So let's just do something like perf record on multi TU. Um, and then let's do dash dash benchmark filter. And we'll look at multi TU 10 only. Although the source code should be exactly the same, right? It's the same function. Um, and set that equal. We'll run this and then we'll do a perf report. So perf report, it looks like it got uh, better. So you'll, so you'll see some noise here, um, you know, between samples, depending on how long you end up profiling. But it's still it's it's a huge gap that's very unlikely to be you know just a you know a one-time thing. And so we see here in our code, um, all right, so we got some moves here: add, imul, add, add, move, compare, and then a jump not equal. So that's where we're spending, you know, pretty much all of our time inside of this application, especially around this uh, multiplication right here. Okay, so let's see what our single translation unit one looks like. So this is our multi-translation unit one. So let's go ahead and do the exact same thing except we'll change this to single translation unit and single TU. So again, looks like it's a whole lot faster, about a whole second faster, in fact. And then we'll do perf report on um, this single TU benchmark. And we see something very different. It looks like all of our um, code became vectorized, right? So it looks like, you know, you know, doing some optimizations, the compiler with O3 has this flag automatically turned on called ftree vectorize. 
So it looks like it was actually able to vectorize our code in this case, but it wasn't able to in the multi-translation unit case. Now, my suspicion with this is the reason why I was able to do it in one and not the other is an aliasing problem. So when the compiler had the full view of the source and the assembly, it was able to, to figure out that, you know, okay, these pointers aren't going to alias each other. So I can go ahead and maybe vectorize my code. That might have been what was limiting the vectorization in the multi-translation unit case, right? If we go ahead and compile the source code uh, or the source code for the function and the rest of the benchmark separately, that alias analysis might not have taken place or the compiler would have, might have been more conservative there. So regardless of what it was, let's see what happens when we enable link time optimization. So we got vectorization with our um, single translation unit code, but not with our multiple translation unit code. So now let's go ahead and clear this out and do ls and let's go ahead and recompile our base ml.cpp and what we're going to do is this dash flto. So this will just you know embed a little thing into this object code so that when everything gets linked together, basically reads that out and you helps and that helps uh, with uh, doing this optimization during link time. So you know doing the same kind of optimizations across the entire executable rather than just on this small section of it um, for this function. So we'll do dash flto here. And then for our multi tu one, we'll have to do that as well. So at the end of all these optimization flags, I'll do dash flto. Okay, so now let's run both of these again. So we'll run single tu first, just so we get a kind of a refresher of how fast it was. 14.6, 2.24, 16.93, and then we'll go ahead and run multi-TU here. So 16.2, 16.79. So it looks like, especially in this uh, two to the ten case, we got a huge speed up, and you know it looks like you know with a little bit of noise, we're around the speed of our original code, our code that's in a single translation unit. So let's go ahead and just do perf record, um, and we'll do the multi-TU one and see why that might have been. So we'll go ahead and do perf report, look into it, and it looks like once we enable link time optimization, the compiler was able to go ahead and um, it was able to go ahead and vectorize this code now, right? So we had non-vectorized code initially um, when we had multiple translation units, but we didn't enable link time optimization. And now we enabled link time optimization, we get our vectorized code that we got in the single translation unit case. All right, so that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. It's a brief introduction of why you should know and maybe look up more about uh, link time optimization and if it might help you and maybe your particular situation. As always, you know, all of this code can be found at github.com slash coffee before arch for this and any of my other series. So we've got stuff on C++ programming, CUDA programming, so that's just GPU programming uh, for NVIDIA GPUs, some microarchitectural benchmarks, some C++ 20 uh, samples, etc. But like I said, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and hope you have a nice day.